Hello and welcome to lectures on cardiac morphology and congenital heart disease. This video we will talk about the position of the heart in the chest. So we'll be looking at models of the heart and the relationship to the surrounding organs. We will also look at life samples for external and internal views of the heart. And we will look at the coronary arteries and details anatomy of the heart. There are several ways to study cardiac anatomy and morphology. One of them is to look at real uh, specimens, native heart specimens, like this neonatal heart that was fixed and treated in a special way. We can see the right side and the left side. If we turn the heart, we can see the right atrium here, the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the left atrium with the left atrial appendage. We can also see the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. This is a 3D printing of the internal cavities of the heart and the veins and arteries. And if we look here, we can see the right ventricle and the right atrium. This is the left ventricle in red and the pulmonary venous return to the left atrium, which shows very clearly the relationship of these veins. This is where the left atrial appendage is. Now, the pulmonary trunk has been cut off and taken out. If we separate these two, we will see that we can separate the aortic root with the coronaries as well, and that will give us a good uh, relationship um, study of these veins. The thing that is missing is the pectinated muscles here in the right atrium or in the trabeculations in the right ventricle that are not very clear. And this is due to the cardiac movement during the imaging study that was done to render this 3D printing. So this uh, way of studying anatomy is good for the relationship of the cardiac chambers and the great arteries and veins. As you can see here, we can see the pulmonary veins in detail and how they are related to the left atrium and the left ventricle. This is another example of a cardiac cast that is entirely different from the previous one in that in this example we can actually see to a very big accuracy the details of the internal structures. So here we can see the uh, right atrial um, crista terminalis and we can see the pectinated muscles. Oops, okay, so the heart is falling apart. That's not good for the patient. Um, in real life, they are all connected. <laughs> so this is the tricuspid valve, actually. And you can see here the details and the accuracy of the trabeculations in the right ventricle. However, the uh, disadvantage of this type of doing uh, this model, CASID model, is you can do it only once. We cannot repeat that several times because we have to destroy some of the internal structures of the heart, like the trabeculations or the papillary muscle. This is, as you can see, a rubbery and flexible model. Um, if we look, let's look at the um, left ventricle uh, uh, side, and uh, here it is, okay? So you can see here, um, the papillary muscles, and this is the smooth part of the septum. This is the ventricular septal, and this is the aortic sinuses. And here we can see the mitral valve with the anterior papillary muscle removed and the posterior papillary muscle removed. So some of the cardiac structures have to be removed and therefore cannot be reproduced more than once. If we look at these samples, the first one will help us identify the external structures of the heart. Uh, here, the neck structures and uh, organs were um, uh, kept, so um, we can see the trachea. If we look from the right uh, lateral side, this is the right lung, the major fissure, the minor fissure separating the upper and lower and middle lung lobes. And if we take the lungs to the side and look from the right lateral side, we can see the right structures of the heart. So here we can see the suprevena cava returning to the right atrium. This is the aorta behind it. This is the right atrium 
And here's the pulmonary vein from behind the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. And this is the left anterior descending corner artery that marcate where the interventricular septum is separating the left ventricle from the right ventricle. If we look from the left lateral side, this is the major fissure separating the upper and lower left lobes. If we take that to the side, we can see the left structures of the heart. So here we can see the left pulmonary artery and it is above the left bronchus and the left pulmonary vein on the left. This is the left pulmonary vein returning to the left atrium. And here we can see the left atrial appendage and the narrow neck of the left atrial appendage. Again, this is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle continuing. This is the left ventricle. And here's the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk and the left ventricle to the aorta. As you can see, both LVOTs and RVOT are crossing. Now, if we flip the heart and we look at the inferior wall or the diaphragmatic wall, after removing the diaphragm, we can see the uh, posterior coronary artery here on the inferior wall of the heart. And this is where the inferior vena cava connects to the right atrium after being removed. And this is where it connects to the hepatic veins and inferior vena cava together. This is the right AV uh, groove. And this is the left AV groove where the coronary sinus lies. This is a specimen that uh, was... Um, dissected in a way to keep the pericardium, to show you the pericardium and the phrenic nerves. So this is the anterior leaflet of the pericardium. And we will see that the pericardium, as you know, has um, uh, the visceral and the parietal leaflet. And part of the aorta and the pulmonary artery are covered in the pericardium. And this is the reflection where the parietal and the visceral um, uh, layers would meet and reflect back. And if we turn the heart and look at the posterior side or aspect of it, of the pericardium, we will see the distance of where the superior vena cava is covered uh, with the pericardium. Here, if we put a probe in the from, this is the left atrium, and this is the pulmonary trunk. If we put a probe behind the left pulmonary trunk and the aorta into the right side towards the uh, right atrium here, so this probe is in what is called the transverse pericardial sinus. So the transverse pericardial sinus runs behind the aorta and pulmonary trunk. And if we flip the heart and look at the back. Here we go. Let's pull these uh, parietal leaflets of the pericardium away. And we'll see that behind the, the, the left atrium and the left veins are outside the pericardium. But if we put our probe, there's a blind pouch behind the left atrium. This is the oblique sinus of the pericardium the oblique pericardial sinus. So in front of it is the left atrium and uh, posterior to it is the esophagus. The good thing about the specimen is to see the phrenic nerves. This is the left phrenic nerve. Let's look at it running at the left side of the pericardium here. You can see the left phrenic nerve and uh, towards the left atrium, and the direction of the left atrium, and the right phrenic nerve is on the right side, running down the course of the SVC, and actually towards the course of the sulcus terminalis of the right atrium. And then finally, we can see the vagal nerve, or the vagus nerve, which is uh, runs uh, behind the, this is the esophagus, and the vagus nerve runs behind, uh, anterior to the esophagus, behind the heart. So that's the aorta, and here's the esophagus, and where this is where the vagal nerve is. Uh, 
Okay, moving on to this next specimen that will show the coronary artery anatomy. In this special preparation, I infused uh, silicon material in the aortic root to cast the coronary arteries and shows them uh, in a nice uh, filled way. So uh, you can see here the right coronary artery and these are the infundibular branches and the coronary artery uh, continues toward the acute margin of the heart. That's the acute margin of the heart and therefore that's the acute marginal branch. And then it courses into the uh, posterior inferior wall of the heart. Uh, between the right atrium here and the right ventricle, there's the right AV junction. That's where it courses down and forms the uh, posterior descending uh, coronary artery. And here we can see a very important branch, which is the AV nodal artery, the AV node branch coming from the right coronary artery, supplying the AV node, which is um, located right there. This is the area where we call the crux of the heart. It's called the crux of the heart because it's where the atrial septum meets with the ventricular septum, the right AV junction, and the left AV junction. So it's like a crux or a cross. That's where it is, the crux of the heart. If we turn the heart around and go back to the coronary arteries and we look at posteriorly uh, at the uh, aorta, we can see the left coronary artery arising from the left coronary sinus, which is slightly left and posterior. The left main coronary artery is this segment, then it branches into the circumflex and the left anterior descending, LAD. From the left anterior descending, we can see the first diagonal branch and the second diagonal branch and the third diagonal branch and so on. And here, we see the great cardiac vein. The cast continued into the venous return of the heart with the great cardiac vein continuing and draining all the cardiac veins into the coronary sinus, which uh, along uh, with the circumflex courses into the left AV junction into the right atrium. So the coronary sinus and the circumflex, circumflex both course into the left AV junction. The coronary sinus empties into the right atrium. There is um, another important branch that comes um, from the uh, left main or, uh, and sometimes from the circumflex, which is the sinus node artery, as you can see. The sinus node is right here in the right atrium, and it can receive supply either from the right coronary artery or the left coronary artery. The distance is similar, uh, so it can have two variations. Okay, so let's take a look at the anatomy of the heart from these specimens. So first, let's take a look at the right atrium. Uh, you can see uh, from the external view of the right atrium, you can clearly differentiate between the sinus part of the right atrium and the trabeculated or the muscular part. The sinus part is the continuation of the superior vena cava here all the way down to the inferior vena cava. So this is the sinus venerum. And the rest of the atrial uh, chamber is actually the atrial appendage, which is uh, defined by the pectinated muscle. And in here, you can see some fatty tissue or uh, cardiac glue that is called the uh, sulcus terminalis, and this is where the conduction system lies. And actually, if we take a closer look at this area, this is where the sinus node actually is located right here, right in this area. So that's the sulcus, sulcus terminalis. Internally, we can see the crista terminalis that separates, uh, let me open this better, uh, separates the pectinated part or the atrial appendage from the uh, sinus uh, venosus or the sinus venerum part. The atria consists of the atrial appendage, the sinus venerum, the uh, septal sulcus, and the vestibule. The vestibule is this area above the tricuspid valve that markates, right here, it markates the outlet 
of the right atrium to the right ventricle. The vest now let's take a look at the septal sulcus, which is a very important structure and its relationship to the left atrium and the right atrium. If we look here, uh, this is where the inferior vena cava enters. And this is the fossa ovalis. As you can see, it's an oval shaped structure. However, it's actually more like a horseshoe shape where, the, uh, where it opens, the opening part of the horseshoe is towards the inferior vena cava. And uh, superiorly, it's marked by the inferior limbus and the superior limbus. The inferior limbus, let me show you that. The, look at the inferior limbus, how it separates the fossa ovalis from the coronary sinus orifice. This is the coronary sinus. And if we look at the coronary sinus orifice, we see this valvular structure. This is the Thebesian valve. And behind it, this is another valve, the Eustachian valve, that separate the inferior vena cava from the right atrium. So these are the important structures in the right. Now, if we look into uh, more details or closely to the septal surface of the right atrium, uh, we can see here the uh, septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve, and there's the coronary sinus, and there's the tendinous structure right here that courses all the way from the inferior vena cava down here, that's the inferior vena cava, and over the coronary sinus and the sebesian valve into the septal leaflet insertion. This is where an important structure lies, which is this membranous septum. This septum separates uh, the right atrium from the left ventricle right here. Uh, and it's above that septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve, so it's called the atrioventricular membranous septum right here. And below the tricuspid valve septal leaflet there is another portion of the uh, membrane septum that separate the right ventricle from the left ventricle, and that's the interventricular membranous septum. Together, this is the membranous septum. That's very important to recognize because it is here where the AV node and the conduction system uh, lies. The AV node is located in the triangle of cock, which is defined or bordered by the um, septal insertion of the uh, septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve, the tendon of Todaro right here, and the orifice of the coronary sinus. In this triangle, this is where the AV node is, and the conduction system goes through the membranous symptom, septum underneath the tricuspid leaflet from here. So that's important to know. Now, if we leave the right atrium and look at the right ventricle, let's uh, take a look at the tricuspid valve and the septal leaflet. The septal leaflet, um, the tricuspid valve has three leaflets. This is the septal leaflet, and it has attachments to the inlet part of the septum. Here we have a big or thick uh, muscular uh, structure, a trabeculation connecting the septal wall to the free wall, and it's called the moderator band. Okay, oops, all right. Um, looking at the tricuspid valve, the tricuspid valve has three leaflets. This is the septal leaflet, and this is the anterior superior, the posterior inferior leaflet. Between them, between both these leaflets, there is a, a uh, papillary muscle that is called the anterior papillary muscle. In this case, it's not very prominent, but sometimes it can be larger than this. So that's the posterior inferior. Or we can look at the right ventricle from the anterior aspect and look at the tricuspid valve that is uh, posteriorly located. And we can see these anterior papillary muscle and the insertion of it on the inlet septum. We can also see this muscular uh, structure, this thick muscle band that is saddle shaped that separate the pulmonary valve from the tricuspid valve. And if we look closely at this area, it looks like a saddle. Uh, somebody's straddling their leg in this end and this end. Uh, but also, if we look at the this, look at this area of the free wall and the 
septal band that also looks like a saddle, saddle shaped. So this is the crista supraventricularis. And here at the ventricular uh, crest, we can see right at the anterior aspect of the ventricular septum, a thick muscle band or a uh, what's called the trabecular septum marginalis, which is a thick muscle band that starts here and has an anterior limb and a posterior limb and a body. And in between the anterior and posterior limb, here inserts the medial papillary muscle. So that's the trabecular septum marginalis. And at the end of it here, it, the moderator band connects and the anterior papillary muscle connects here as well. Okay, let's move on to this specimen that showed the right ventricle from a right ventriculotomy incision, something similar to what surgeons do uh, when they do ventriculotomy incision. So here we can see a view of the tricuspid valve. Here's a perimembranous septum. So if we look at the pulmonary valve, we notice that the pulmonary valve has um, three leaflets. And since there are no coronary arteries, we don't need to name uh, each leaflet um, uh, separately. However, they're all semilunar valves, as you can see, is a semilunar or half moon shaped uh, leaflets. And they don't have a single uh, attachment as AV valves do. It is rather a line, a semilunar line of attachments all uh, around the valve ring. And above the leaflet, there's the sinus of each leaflet. And in the center of the leaflet, we see the nodule that is halfway in between each semilunar space. So that's the pulmonary valve. Okay, in this next specimen, let's take a look at the left ventricle. Uh, so normally, the way we section the heart is to follow the blood flow. So for example, in the right ventricle, we make an incision um, from the right atrium. Um, this is the right atrium, and we make incision coming down as the inflow, and then post anteriorly to the outflow to the right ventricular outflow tract and the pulmonary artery. Uh, so to separate the septum from the free wall of the right ventricle. Similarly, in the left ventricle, we can make an incision from the inflow over here, of the left ventricle and then posteriorly towards in between the left appendage and the pulmonary artery and we cut through the left coronary artery going out into the aorta. Uh, however, in this heart we did a separate different incision to show the internal structures of the left ventricle uh, more clearly. So here, we can see clearly the um, papillary muscles in the left ventricle. So here on the right uh, side of the screen, the posterior medial papillary muscle, and on the left side of the screen, or my left hand, is the anterior superior papillary muscle. Now, if we turn the heart, we notice that the ventricular septum is not in this plane, but in this plane. This is why the papillary muscles uh, can be uh, in an, that unusual position. So, uh, going back to this section, we can see that we dissected right through the anterior leaflet of the um, mitral valve and through the aortic valve as well. We dissected right through them. As you can see, this is the anterior leaflet, and we cut through it, and this is the aortic valve. And here uh, we can see the location of the left coronary artery. This is the aortic valve, and this is the non-coronary cusp. Let's open it further to show you the orifice of the coronary artery. Here, let me get it closer. Yeah, so that's the left coronary artery orifice. And um, here is the 
where the location of the non-coronary cusp would be. Okay, um, in this view, you can clearly see the mitral fibrous continuity between the mitral valve and the aortic valve. As you can see, there is no myocardial fibers, there is no muscle fibers that separate the mitral valve to the aortic valve, unlike the right ventricle where there is that muscle. And you can see here there is no separation, there is no interposition. So that's uh, the anatomy of the mitral valve and the left ventricle. Now, if we open the left atrial chamber, we see uh, that it is quite different from the right atrial chamber um, in the sense that it is uh, completely composed of a sinus part. There is no uh, pectinated muscle, and that means that it is all derived from the venous pulmonary veins. Interiorly, we can see the left atrial appendage, which is a... Uh, uh, structure that is characterized by a very narrow um, orifice or neck and we can see that orifice here opening into the uh, left atrium anteriorly uh, so right there so the there's the septal component of the left atrium and here is the rest and the sinus component and the rest of the left atrium, which is composed from the pulmonary veins. Now, the left atrium also has a vestibular zone, which is the area here, marking the inlet of the left atrium to the uh, left ventricle, which is right above the mitral valve. So that's it for now, and we'll see you on the next video.